Let's examine how the solution to this, to, uh, this problem was obtained. First, notice that we're looking at testing a claim that the GPA of night students is greater than the GPA of, of uh, day students. So this is going to be a hypothesis test. Somebody is saying that they think the GPA of night students is greater than the GPA of, of day students. So let's suppose that mu1 is measuring the, the average GPA of all the night students, that mu2 is measuring the average GPA of, of all the day students. If we, so if the GPA of the night students is greater than the GPA of the day students, then mu1 minus mu2 would have to be greater than 0. That's the research hypothesis. That's what somebody is... is uh, is claiming that they think that that's the case. That means that the alternative hypothesis will be that mu1 minus mu2 is less than or equal to 0. Of course the alternative hypothesis is just always listed as, as equal to. So to test that hypothesis let's think of samples. The uh, sample of uh, the night students and the sample of the day students we take the average of each and then find the difference and so on this axis I'm measuring uh, that variable the the XD the di the maybe we'll call it an X bar D uh, the the average of, of the, <laughs> the the difference in the the averages of the the means of the samples so we'll do an experiment will actually find uh, a sample of the night students, find their average, find a sample of the day students, find their average, and find their difference, and that will give us uh, a point estimate. Of course, that point estimate won't be an exact uh, mu1 minus mu2. So our question is, is what's the probability that we would get that point estimate if the null hypothesis is true. So we hope to convert that, that point estimate to a, either a t-score or a z-score, depending on our situation. In this case, we'll be doing a t-score. Uh, so to do that, we'll need to know an estimate for the standard deviation of the distribution of these uh, uh, x, the, of these x bar d's. So I'm going to let SE represent that uh, uh, standard the estimate of the standard deviation of this distribution. <clears throat> and we'll probably need to look in a textbook or some other reference to help us find that. We're not, not uh, developing the theory of those in this class. So we find that T or Z value the same way that we always do. We look at the point estimate minus uh, the population uh, value for in, in this case it's going to be the value whatever the x0 is of course this mu1 minus mu2 for for the the null hypothesis is just going to be 0 in our case uh, divided by that SE and that will give us this point down here that value is the test statistic so what we're interested in finding is what's the probability that we would get this P this point estimate uh, under the conditions that the null hypothesis is true. So we'd find out what this uh, test statistic is and then would be interested in finding the area to the right of that uh, test statistic value. Uh, the area to the right because the alternative hypothesis is, is talking about greater than. If that probability is very low, then it's very unlikely for us to have gotten this uh, test statistic. So the null hypothesis would have to go. If the probability is low, the null hypothesis goes. If that probability is relatively high, <coughs> then we, we can't reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis flies. <laughs> Those are the rhymes that kind of help you remember. If the probability is low, the null hypothesis must go. If the probability is high, 
then the null hypothesis flies. So let's use R to help us do these calculations. First, let's tell R the known information. We have N1, uh, 35 night students, so let's let that be the number of night students. X1 bar be the average GPA of those night students, and the standard deviation of that sample is 0 0.31. And let's enter the given information for the uh, sample of uh, day students. There were 40 of them. Their GPA was 2.55, and their standard deviation was 0 0.4. Notice these, these next two lines in the script are not executable lines. They're just comments reminding me of what the alternative hypothesis is and what the, the null hypothesis is. We think the population mean of the night students is greater than the Pop than the uh, mean of the uh, day students. So a, a mu 1 minus mu 2 is going to be greater than 0. And of course, the null hypothesis is always equal to 0. Uh, the, the, the null hypothesis in any hypothesis test is always an equal to something. And it's always equal to whatever the alternative hypothesis is greater than or less than or not equal to. So now we've got enough information to calculate our um, point estimate. Uh, we'll call it XD for the difference of these, uh, these two sample means. Now usually we need to consult some expert to identify what our estimate of the standard deviation of the distribution of the XDs are. Uh, this particular estimate came from uh, from uh, Dr. Uh, Kosak's book, uh, and so we calculate that estimate. So then we calculate the test statistic, which is going to, of course, be our point estimate minus the value that the null hypothesis is saying that should be uh, divided by uh, the standard deviation. It tells us how many standard deviations away we are. So let's highlight that and run that script. And so that's telling us that uh, our T value, our test statistic is 2.600. And for grading purposes in the homework, on the online homework, they're asking us to round it to two decimal places. So it will be 2.60. Now, of course, that's not the rest of the story. Once we find that test statistic, which we just calculated. Uh, then we want to find the area to the right of that test statistic because the alternative hypothesis was saying greater than. So <clears throat> we need to find this value. We'll need to find a uh, PT. We'll use a PT function in, in R to calculate that value. To do that, we're going to uh, need to find the degree of freedom. Uh, Dr. Kosak uses uh, the Welch uh, Satterwhite uh, degree of freedom equation. And so here we're calculating those degrees of freedom. Then the p value is going to be 1 minus the pt of t minus d. Let's look at why that is. If we calculated pt of our test statistic with the given degree of freedom, it would tell it would calculate this light green area down here. What we need is this uh, dark yellow or orange. I'm not sure what color that is. Area up here. So, so we need to take one minus the that PT value. So that's the explanation of why that P value is one minus that PT. Let's highlight that and run it. Since I just run the previous script before, we could highlight the whole thing and run it all, but I just need to highlight this part and run it. And so there's the p-value. Notice that p-value is relatively low. Often in a hypothesis test, somebody has specified the alpha, what the critical value, what the, the p-value, the critical p-value is. But uh, this is still pretty low, so probably we'll reject the null hypothesis and and uh, it seems like there's some evidence that the night student's GPA is higher.